like I'm always using the same strategy against the Crusade. Um, there's no big difference. On the battlefield, sometimes, depending on the battlefield, you need to split your archers, but in the end, it's the same core. So if you're still there, now you can see how I set up those troops to make it right. I, I guess it's better to explain that by showing off than by just explaining from the cold. Uh, so the square formation to draw that attention, um, that's like where the horse archers are shooting at first. And your archers are safe. And then you're going with your two cavalries, both in skin formation and both behind of your archers. The reason why they are behind of your archers and not in front is you want to make sure that your archers are having a clear sight. That they do have the line of fire all the time. And that they can shoot to the horse archers to the fullest all the time. So here's the thing. Here's the thing about the strategy. The, as I said, the horse archers are always behaving the same way, no matter if they are attacking, no matter if they are defending, like in this case, they are the defenders. And they are, in most of the cases, are coming uh, from the left side. So what is going to happen here? Uh, you know what? Let's make a little screenshot. Just like that. Hold on. So, um, what we can expect here on this battlefield is that horse archers... Oh, wait. Horse archers are placed here. There's the infantry line. There are archers. And... Uh, how to draw them? These are the cavalry. Yeah, this is the cavalry. So what is going to happen with the horse archers in, in this battle is they will most likely, in most of the cases, they come from the left. Like that. They are approaching you, uh, trying to get behind your ranks. So this is how they come in. This is how they get at you. Uh, wait, give me a moment. Yeah, that's better. So, um, and then in the best case scenario, they also try... Oh, wait. And they also try to come back. You know, and this is how the cycle is. They go back, shoot their arrows, and they go back. They won't last long here uh, if you do not do anything. They just go into you and go out to you. And this is where your cavalry right here is coming into place. Um, once the horse archers are like here at this tree, you're going to advance with your cavalry on the right. You're going, like, you will see that I'm going, like, going with the go there command to make sure that they are, like, here. This is the first order I'm going to give them. And once they are there, the horse archers should be around here. Depending on where the horse archers are, I'm going to say, all right, go there. And go behind. And this is where, this in the best case scenario, they will meet up there. And then... This bubble will exist. They will get stopped. This is how they you drag them into that situation where they cannot get out. They cannot behind. AI is telling them to go to go back, but they cannot because my cavalry is stopping them. And this is where my archers can fully go into those horse archers. Um, if that goes wrong because I get the timing, not, I get the wrong timing. My timing is off. I I misjudge the situation. They are faster than expected and stuff. I still have my cavalry on the five here, so the horse archers are not able to just simply go behind my archer lines. I still have my cavalry here to make them uh, having a bad time. If things are going totally wrong. I just let them attack and go back and try with the next time. You know, there's no there's no worries if the first attack cycle is going wrong, you mistime something. It's okay, they will come back anyway, because this is how the AI behaves. So the core part of the strategy is just simply making sure that this one cavalry is um, able to get behind of the horse archers once they are here. They cannot go back anymore. They cannot go forward because there's this cavalry waiting for them. And in the meantime, they are dragged into a close ranged fight. They are not able to move. They are not able to shoot. Meanwhile, your archers are doing the business they should do and everything is going to be all right. Let's see if that is going to work out in this fight here. Uh, I, uh, let's go. Yeah, there's one struggle. I already see the high ground is missing. That's okay. 
So as I said, the horse archer is coming from the left. There he goes, and I'm already selling, saying my archers, uh, my calf to go forward. The thing is, I do not want to be too quick because I do want to make sure that the horse archer is not concentrating on my calf. So I need to let them come now. I make sure that my cavalry is able to make their move. Oh, these are a lot. These are a lot. I'm a little bit too late. That's okay. Now I was going with the attack command on my calf. And you see, the horse archers are having struggle returning back, so they can only go forward. And in front of them, there are also horses waiting. I'm going with the attack on, on the cavalry. And you see, they will get demolished here. They will get demolished. They do not have the clear sight. They cannot really do anything. They are, on, they are stuck now and not uh, being able to go forth. They are not able to go back. They are just in a huge pile of shit. Horse archers suck on the close range. They cannot do anything. And... Uh, a huge pile is gone. Alright. Once you see that they are returning back, that most of the enemy is gone, you just go back to your basic setup. So that means the five cavalry there and the other cavalry here. I do not really know where my archers are. Oh. It should be somewhere else. I probably told them to go there. Uh, that was a misclick. Anyway, doesn't change us anything. Alright, and this is how you can eliminate 130 hero archers in a very, very short amount of time without experiencing too many losses on your side. Alright, and once they come back, you just do exactly the same again. Uh, if you do not want to micromanage that much, you can also go with the follow me command. Um, the reason why I'm not going with the follow me command is you can use the same strategy also if you do not use a horse. You know, that's why I'm clicking like that because you can do exactly the same. If you are not on horse, if you are an infantry guy, you can still use the same. You just need to make sure that your uh, cavalry is close to the horse archers. You shall not go with the attack command before your cavalry is not close to the horse archers to make sure that your calf is really attacking there and not like suddenly turning back and attacking infantry or something. Alright, but sadly we need to push forward a little bit because of the respawn. Alright, I hope I could help you. That's the basic strategy you're using. Um... It's, it's working like on nearly every battlefield. Uh, the disadvantage of that strategy is that you really need to get the right timing. Uh... And a battlefield which is having a very uneven ground. The best situation is if you can make sure that your archers are in a line and are having that high ground advantage. That's the best case scenario. I would say that this battlefield right here is already fitting to that. Another disadvantage is, uh, or another thing you need to notice, you need a certain amount of cavalry to make that work. Uh, it's not going to work out if you only have 20 cavalrists or something, so you need to bring your, your guys into that. Um, you do not need that many infantry though against horse archers. Ay ay ay. Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have gone with the attack that early. That's okay, we're winning that anyway. I guess the biggest problem the horse archer is solved. And yeah, this is how you go.
Yeah, give it a try. It is very effective. Like you see, we are losing 100 here. I'm a little bit aggressive. I'm going with the attack very early. Also, I need to admit, of course, we are not facing like 400 Khan Scouts here. The numbers would be different if so. Like we would have way more casualties on our side. In the end, you're turning out as a winner. You're going to be the winner. Uh, no matter what, no matter what. The strategy is just very, very viable. I already checked that out and several twice in several situations. We were also able to defeat the Kuzaid with that strategy, even while they were outnumbering us. So it happens, that it appears that this, this strategy is working out in most of the cases. I think I had one or two times where the strategy wasn't working out, but this is because um, some things were not fitting. Uh, one time I was getting defeated because I didn't have the right amount of um, cavalry troops to less cavalry. And one time it wasn't working out because, uh, first of all, they had very high tiers, a lot of Khan Scouts, and I had two less archers. So really a lot of things need to work, uh, need to fit there. Uh, but on the other hand side, I mean, obviously, uh, you are not able to defeat someone if you're coming in with peasants while the enemy is having tier 5 troops. That is nothing like unnormal or, or nothing strange or nothing bad about the strategy. This is just because being unequal as well. Going into the battle with very unequal starting points. Anyway, in this case we were outnumbering the enemy anyway. You can see... Uh, uh, the most of the kills, oh, the Master Arch is only 43 kills. Interesting. Oh, we had more than just the Master Archer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sums up. And the Palace Guard is just really shining bright. And you see that also cavalry in this play is, like, your own cavalry is delivering a lot of kills. Especially on the Azurai Ferris, it's very, very, um... Mm, not not rare, but uh, less common that the SY cavalry is doing anything. But here you can see the cataphract, 30 kills. Imperial cataphract, 11 kills. This is where the damage is coming from. Your cavalry is having a major part, uh, a major impact on this approach. Um, you do not want to play without them. Horse archers without cavalry, having cavalry on your own is very hard to take on. Uh, you would need to skirmish more, I guess. Yeah, and this is the strategy against horse archers. Very successful in most of the cases. Uh, and we are able to move on. Great. What about enemy cavalry when you are the defender? Wouldn't it counter charge your cavalry? No, most likely they charge into your infantry. This is why you put your square formation in front of your archers that much to make sure that they draw attention. And most of the cases, if the battle goes that much forward that the enemy cavalry is coming into place, it's a huge chaos anyway. Uh, so yeah, cavalry, uh, like cavalry is going on that pile of horse archers anyway then. You know? Like, they will, in most of the cases, they will not open up um, another place to, you know, concentrate on. Most likely, they concentrate on the infantry uh, in most of the cases. And there you just go with the attack on the infantry if things are going wrong. 